Welcome back everyone to another episode of Minnie's Mod Marvels. Today I hope you brought your wetsuits and umbrellas as we take a deep dive into the long-awaited video which covers Ark's aquatic life that is affected by Kraken Sweater Dinos. Before we begin, I just wanted to take a moment to say that this video is sponsored by coffee. Coffee is delicious and helps perk me up in the morning and even though it doesn't pay me to make these videos, it does give me the much needed energy. Now that that's out of the way, as usual, please check the video description for timestamps to jump straight to your favorite affected dino. And let's begin. The Anglerfish The first creature we'll be having a look at is, honestly, one of my favorite underdogs. Not only does this fish know how to boogie under the depths while collecting mass amounts of silica pearls with its own headlight, but now has the added bonus of being able to be harvested for angler gel every 30 minutes without the need for butchery. The Astrocetus. This giant space sausage has had a few good changes done to it under Kraken's better dinos. While taming this monstrous whale, you will discover that you no longer lose huge amounts of taming effectiveness between feeding. The Astrocetus has also had its mobility boosted by having its speed increased in the air and underwater, as well as an increase to their teleportation range by 50%. And lastly, you'll find it's much easier to navigate ocean depths, as smaller predators will no longer target this guy and the Astro is immune to jellyfish stings. Basilosaurus These must-have water mounts have gotten their own little feature added with Kraken's better dinos, by now having the ability to produce their own bio-oil, which can be refined into gas, and used for a variety of other features and recipes. Nidaria. Jellyfish have been provided with a bunch of new utilities and changes. First and foremost, you can tame these bad boys with Kraken's fish basket, which can be made in the Kraken's workbench. Having jellies can be great for natural biotoxin harvesting every 30 minutes and can offer a decent defense around any base which utilize a moat system. Just keep in mind you will not be able to command them and they will always remain aggressive on a low aggro range. On the right side, these jellies now come in a variety of colors and sizes, and you'll never have to worry about feeding your little friends. You'll also be pleased to discover that wild jellies now have a massively reduced aggro range and will no longer chase you across the map. The Colcanth Like their jelly roommates, these little guys can be tamed with fish baskets. When you leave your little water pet to wander, you'll notice that they'll find and gather random junk they find in the riverbeds and hold it for you to collect. Dunkleostis Finally the TLC these guys needed. Dunkleostis has always been a high interest of mine, but never quite used, as its usefulness was rather limited. Thanks to Kraken's Better Dinos, you will find all sorts of improvements to these guys. Firstly, their attack range has been increased, and they are capable of inflicting 7 times the damage to Trilobites and Eurifs, while also dealing 5 times the damage to Ammonites. Most importantly, however, is their reduction to Crystal, Pearls, Black Pearls, Obsidian, Metal, and Stone by a whopping 75% in their inventories. This makes these guys a utility must-have for water bases. Electrophorus One of my least favorite ocean-dwelling, rage-inducing hell spawn. They've been made a bit more tolerable with a reduction to their aggro range. You'll also discover your tamed eels can be transported to other water pens via a fish basket, as well as are now capable of inflicting as much damage to their enemies as wild eels. The Eurypterid Next, we have the Eurypterid. Surprisingly, once you tame these guys using the fish basket, if you manage to get your hands on one that size 2.0, you will be able to ride them. Their right click even does a sting attack, which can inflict torpor damage to your enemies. Another benefit to these pinchy boyos is their ability to passively generate silica pearls and black pearls in their inventory while wandering. Lamprey and Leech. If there's one thing in Ark I never quite had the stomach for, it's leeches. If you're braver than I, you can tame these little parasites via the fish basket now for a variety of utility purposes. Wild and tamed leeches will now have a limit of 10 minutes, which is 10 minutes too long if you ask me, 
of being attached before they fall off full of blood. But at the very least, there will be a 5 minute cooldown for both wild and tame leeches before they reattach themselves. But honestly, who would let them live that long? Obviously, tamed leeches can be harvested for leech blood and have the ability to attach themselves to you, which will provide you with Swamp Fever debuff. Yay! Uh, but it does gather two packs of blood per minute while they're attached and gives you an inspiration buff. This inspiration buff does provide you a boost of 125% to your crafting speed. But uh, I'll stick to focal chili, thanks. You can feed leeches with blood globs, which are crafted with blood in the Better Dinos Bench, or let them feed on you while attached to your face. Ugh, no thanks. The Lyoplurodon. These cool cats have received a complete overhaul. First and foremost, the new, non-sparkling ones can be tamed indefinitely and are provided with an array of new attacks and abilities and can be ridden without a saddle. You'll find your water lion will have a bite attack with left click and a charging bite attack with right click, and can now carry other aquatic creatures in its jaws with the sea key. Its mobility has also greatly increased with the ability to backpedal and strafe left and right. In addition to this, the new Lyoplurodon can provide tribemates with not only an oxygen buff which lowers their oxygen consumption, water vision, and swim speed, but also has a Deodon-like passive healing ability that can be utilized for underwater encounters. You'll find this new treasure can be tamed by the traditional KO method and prefers superior kibble. The Manta You'll no longer need to struggle to passively feed these water skis, and you can now simply knock them out. Taming them does require some regular kibble or, of course, the usual food. Just keep in mind, they will now flee once attacked, so it's a good idea to have a game plan when trying to nab one. In addition, you can transport these guys via a fish basket to other pools of water if necessary. The Megalodon not a whole lot has changed with the ever-popular oceanic threat since it's not really needed. But you will find that your shark has a stronger bite, and you can now harvest prime fish meat from its corpse. The Mosasaurus Not much is needed for these predators of the ocean, but Kraken still managed to add a couple of small, nice changes. You will find your Moza will no longer become targeted by aquatic life that are in over their heads and will be immune to jellyfish and eel stings. And their mobility has been improved upon with the ability to pitch up and down. As for the cherry on top, Kraken has also added a tech variant in the wild as well. Piranhas. These beginner's nightmare are now properly tameable with the fish basket, and can gain a gang bonus of up to plus 8. Though their base damage has been reduced, the gang bonus will more than make up for this. Wild piranhas will now behave more like actual piranhas, in which they will not attack things unless these things show some sort of weakness, via either a bleed debuff, their HP being below 50%, or they're suffering from some sort of poison like Swamp Fever or Mega Rabies. With these debuffs, the Piranhas will also have a 50% boost to their little bites against you as well, so tread, or should I say swim, carefully. The Plesiosaur Like the Moza, this guy has been provided the large predator buff, which makes it avoided by smaller predators and you can also pitch and up down while traversing the depths. The Sabertooth Salmon Wild salmon will no longer hurt your oxygen when attacking you, leading to less incidents of drowning when angering a school of these buggers. You'll also learn that, like everything else, these guys are tameable for a few new uses. One use is the ability to slaughter them by equipping a sickle and using the wheel on your doomed target. Once they are deceased, simply harvest them for the new resource, raw high-protein fish meat. And occasionally, you may spot a rare lunar salmon spawning among the local schools. And last, you can now breed your salmon. The Tusa 
Like the Moza and Plesio, your giant calamari has been provided the huge water dino buff, which again means smaller predators will steer clear of them. But unlike the previously mentioned, these guys have been provided a new ability when you press your C key, which will shove any creature that's attacking its head away in an effort to prevent them from being pinned. And that does it for the Aquatic Creatures Edition. I wanted to take a moment to thank Kraken for his amazing work on this mod, as well as a thank you to all of you for taking the time to watch and support this series. I do apologize for the slow uploads recently, as my schedule has been overflowing with projects and work, but as long as you continue to support the series, I will do what I can to get videos up. That's not to say Kraken's Better Dinos is complete just yet, we still have one more subject to cover on this mod, the utilities video. In the meantime, if you haven't checked out the other creatures of this mod already, be sure to stop by my other Mod Marvel KBD videos, as I have covered the shoulder pets, small, medium, and large dinos previously. And be sure to check out the mod itself, as Kraken has added lots of new changes which I have not covered as well. In the meantime, a simple like and subscribe is all it takes to help push me to get me to work, and the aforementioned cup of coffee. But I'll see you next time.